So you want to defraud an election. <laughs> Good for you. Come with me and I'll walk you through the process of committing a Class E felony. First, a quick gut check. The FBI says there's absolutely no coordinated fraud in our current electoral system, which means you can be the first. Let's find out how, together. Voter fraud in person is the most obvious starting point. Here's how it works. Step one, show up to a polling station. Step two, claim to be someone else who also happens to live in that district. This could be tricky, since you could be recognized and that person could have already voted. Step three, copy the signature exactly. Step four, Vote. Congratulations. You've committed a classy felony punishable by up to five years in prison. And you've added one whole extra vote. Now most people get stuck after step four because they're in prison. Don't be deterred. If you really want to sway an election, you'll have to pay close attention to step five. Step five. Repeat steps one through four thousands of times. Remember, this step geometrically increases your chances of being arrested on a classy felony. Or in this case, thousands of classy felonies. Wow, I can hear you say. In-person voting fraud is hard with few upsides. There's got to be another way. Welcome to part two. This election, you probably heard a bunch of yahoos barking about vote-by-mail fraud. And I bet you're asking yourself, can I get in on that action? Well, the short answer is no, because no one's ever done it successfully and gotten away with it. But you're a maverick, so let's break new ground together. Step one. Figure out everyone who's voting by mail this year. Step two, steal tens of thousands of ballots. Now remember, there are two ways to do this. One way is to sneak around their homes for hours waiting to steal the ballot in the exact time after the mailman drops it off and before that person comes out to check the mail. This method, while tedious, can be incredibly rewarding for those who do it tens of thousands of times. Another way is to go house to house asking if they have a mail-in ballot inside and if you can have it. Then really hope none of them call the police on you. Step three, Somehow stop anyone from knowing you have their ballots and prevent the state officials from emailing, calling, or paging the registered voters whose ballots you stole. I have literally no idea how to do this. Step 4. Match every voter's signature exactly by somehow finding all of them and tracing each one by hand. Step 5. Fake a bunch of barcodes exactly matching the security systems of every state. Step 6. Get past the judges that oversee the ballot counting process. Step 7. Sneak past election officials who have been running elections for decades. Step 8. Congratulations! You've successfully, and for the first time in modern history, voted enough times to change an election and get away with it. <laughs> well, I'm sure you've learned a lot today, but we've glossed over something important. You're going to prison. Now, plenty of you will say, this is garbage, or here's an idea you didn't mention, or what about this guy on the internet who said he voted for his cat? Well, he doesn't exist. Someone who does exist is this man in Florida, who applied for an extra mail-in ballot for his recently deceased wife in order to, in his words, test the system. He's in jail now, and he didn't even get to vote twice. So to recap, voter fraud is super easy, as long as you can dodge the FBI, judges, and local law enforcement, bypass the thousands of civil servants who have been running elections for years, dump thousands of ballots in important counties and hope no one notices they far exceed the amount of registered voters in that county, or do any of that crazy stuff we talked about without getting caught. But don't let all this information deter you. Rise above, be the first, and enjoy your stay in prison.